Welcome to the Speckled Truth Podcast. This is the only show dedicated to the conservation of the trophy trout population from the East Coast to the Gulf Coast. Here, we go below the surface to discuss what happens when science and anglers work together for a cause. Gear up with your host, Captain Chris Bush, a trophy trout purist, leader and educator within the fishing community, as he talks about all things big speckled trout. Get ready for the slimy, salty truth, better known as the speckled truth. Hey everyone, I want to welcome you back to another episode of the Speckled Truth Podcast. Truth be told, I have a very special guest tonight, and uh, this is a very surreal moment for me because my mentor, Captain Mike McBride, without hesitation, when asked what, who his mentor is, it's this man sitting to my right, Captain Jay Watkins. So I want to welcome Captain Jay Watkins to the Speckled Truth Podcast. Well, I'm glad to be here. I, I tell you what, uh, Mike's got pretty big shoes to fill, honestly. Um, I, you know, I, it kind of, things like this kind of take you by surprise. You know, you think we, we've talked about doing this a long time and, yes, sir. and, uh, then when it gets here, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm sitting here thinking, golly, this is, this is really happening. And, you know, in the beginning of my career, I didn't, you know, we didn't think about anything like this. We sure. didn't think anybody was going to really, really care, really. Uh, and you know, to, to see over 40 something years, what's, how things have changed, how, how the fisheries changed, how people have changed, how communicating's changed. You know, we got yeah. social media, we got cell phones, uh, you know, we've got podcasts, we've got newsletters, game plans, fishing clubs. I mean, this is crazy. It's crazy how, how it's, how it's all happened. And, you know, uh, there's, I, I, I feel like, and, you know, kind of the, the topic that me and you were going to talk about, I think is. I feel like I've come full circle in, in 40 years, you know, because because when I started, Chris, I started as a fishing guide. My dad didn't want me to be a fishing guide. He wanted me to go to college. I went to college for two years. That was our deal. Yeah. I quit, had Smokey Gaines build me a little wooden skiff, and I started yeah. polling Estes Flats, you know, because I wanted to be a fisher. And my dad said, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh. You know, I want to be a fisherman. He said, who's going to pay you to do that? And I said, I'm not sure right now, but I'm hoping somebody does. Yeah. But, but you know, as we, before we really get started, you know, my timing was perfect. You know, I don't want anybody that's listening to this to be misled by thinking it's something special or something brilliant that Jay Watkins did. It's not. My timing was I lived in the right area at the right time and got lots of help, you know, from yeah. the GCCA, which is a CCA nowadays. Uh, you know, and lots of local help uh, type of deal. And so uh, it's been, this has been a, a very, very much a learning uh, experience for me. It still is. Every yeah. day, every day I learn something, uh, you know. And, and uh, well, today I learned I wasn't as good as I was <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> so, so I don't want to, and you kind of alluded to it a little bit, but, but also, too, talking about the different audio means or the social media means that we have out there to, to carry our message. And, and that's the importance why, thankfully, you said yes to do this is because uh, I think the unfortunate reality is people outside of the state of Texas or the Gulf Coast don't understand Jay Watkins and the importance that you have to our fishery. And so, thankfully, we have <laughs> means like this to do that, right? Yeah. Because as you'll see, and, and hopefully we get into more of that discussion, how integral and how much of a part you've been uh, to our fishing community. But before we get into that, and you kind of alluded to it a little bit, tell us a little bit about Jay Watkins, uh, about yourself. Yeah, man, it, you know, uh, I have people, that's that's a question that I have people ask me a lot. And, and I think it's because I'm older now. You know, when I was younger, you know, when I was 26, 21, 22, they, people didn't ask me about Jay Watkins. They didn't really care about Jay Watkins. Um, you know what? I'm simple, really am. And most of my clientele would tell you this, you know, I don't socialize with my clients and people find that really strange, hmm. but in 40 years, I can name on one hand in less than five fingers, the number of times I've been out to dinner with a client. Hmm. Um, I'm fairly private, uh, at the dock, uh, in line at a fishing tournament, um, maybe, you know, on the days when we keep a few fish at the cleanest end. I'm pretty confident. Yeah. Um, outside of that, I'm not, uh, you know, um, 
you're sitting here next to me. <laughs> Heck, I'm five foot seven and I'm probably <laughs> lying about that. You know, no. my hairs fell out. My ears are bigger. My nose continues to grow. <laughs> I mean, it's not like there's a whole lot of things going for me besides, you know, waiting, you know, waiting and knowing a little bit about fishing. I always start my morning, Chris, with, with my guys like this. I said, look, guys, I don't know what you do for a living, but I'm terrible at it. Hmm. I said, because the only thing I'm good at is fishing. And I said, and I'm not always good at that. I hope this is not one of those days, but really and truly who I am. I'm, I'm a, I'm a dad, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a dad. I'm a son of a, a football coach and a, a lower middle-class family. My mom worked at the school with my dad. You know, I grew up, uh, you know, as a, basically my sister passed away when she was 15, hmm. I was nine years old. So basically grew up a spoiled, not very wealthy, kid yeah. you know in a very small town rockport small say, town so small town I, yeah yeah raised here uh and uh like i said my dad was a football coach and a biology teacher he never wanted to be referred to as a coach and a teacher always a teacher and a coach he wanted hmm. to be a teacher first the teaching part first and uh we didn't have much uh didn't have a boat till i was probably we were probably 16 17 years old and it was uh 16 foot polar craft, you know, with a 25 horsepower, sure. you know, Johnson on it. And, uh, my dad was not the fisherman that I have turned into, but, uh, I remember my mom went in my dad's passing. I remember my mom told me, she said, when we bought the first little boat, she said, I told your dad, we can't afford it. And she, and my dad looked at her and said, we can't afford not to, uh, my dad took me fishing. He gave me the opportunity to, to fish. He told me before I had my first son, he said, the world's full of things after your children. He said, if you occupy their time, uh, in, you know, in, in the field, on the water, at a fishing pier, uh, whatever it is outdoors, um, that's what we did. He said, there'd be less, there'd be less opportunity mm -hmm. for those predators, <clears throat> for those predators. I did that with my kids. My dad did it with me and I have lots of clients that I've attracted that clientele. Uh, you know, I tell, always told my boys this growing up, you are what you eat. And my clientele is what I eat. They are people that think like I think. Uh, people that, you know, that want to learn something, that um, want to be better. You know, uh, before my dad died, my dad died 35 years ago. So my dad has seen very little of, I don't want to use the word success that I've, that I've achieved. I have been lucky. And, and extremely blessed in this business, but he didn't get to see much of it. Uh, he really didn't. He didn't get to see much of it, but he told me this. He said, if you're going to do this fishing thing, what he called it, he said, if you're going to do this fishing thing, he said, I want you to remember something. He said, you know, we always go fishing and we take some of the coaches and we take some of the administrators and they always say, you know, well, you know, Sonny, I'd rather be lucky than good. And he said, you know, that's a lot of people's motto. Hmm. And he said, well, guess what? He said, luck runs out. And he said, if you're going to make it in this business and you're going to raise a family and you're going to succeed, he said, you're going to have to be better than lucky. Damn. And, 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 you know, and when he said it, you know, I'm, when he said it, you know, I'm a 20 <laughs> year old, you whatever, know, whatever, and I'm yeah. like, well, whatever dad, you know, yes. type of deal. And as I, as I grew in the business, I realized that that's really true. I realized that, you know what, the guys that are really good, the guys that I grew up with, uh, not all of which were guides that always seemed to catch them. You know, there was a reason why they always caught them. Hmm. And you know what? That hasn't changed in this industry. Uh, the people that catch the most fish on the most consistent basis, they're the best at it. And that's the same way with life is. Yeah. That's the same way in the business world so it is, you know? And so I'm very simple and I have simple wants and wishes. I am absolutely, absolutely happy with the life I've got. If, if, you know, the man upstairs has blessed me with good health, I'll be 62 years old in December. I don't feel 62. You don't I, look 62. I, yeah, I you don't, don't. I don't feel, I don't yeah. feel 62. You know, the doctor told me one time, he said, you know what your problem is, Jay? He said, you think you're 18 <laughs> <laughs> and you eat like you think you're 18. Now, <laughs> hey, I don't want anybody out there to think I'm terribly overweight because I'm not, he is but not. I am a junk food junkie. That's and the only thing that keeps me, in check, that weight in check is all that weight, all the weight every day. You know, Mike McBride always said, he said, you got those mud legs. So those little bitty chunky, you know, beefed up little mud legs type of deal. But anyway, 
not to get off of it. I'm simple, really am. I, I wanted simple things. I've got simple things. Uh, been extremely, extremely blessed. Got two terrific kids. Great. I came from a great family. My dad loved my mom. My mom loved my dad. Um, you know, they, they, they set good examples and, uh, and they supported me, you know, they, they listened, you know, when I, Mm -hmm. when I talked, they listened, when I wanted to be a fishing guide, my dad didn't want me to be one, but when I decided that's what I was going to do, then he supported it. And my mom's always, always supported it. Um, you know, it's funny to hear you say all of this because I'm literally looking at you and I've already done a podcast with my own father mm-hmm. and he's a 73 year old man <laughs> who sometimes thinks he's 18. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and, uh, and I can't help but draw the parallel of, of the support that he has for his son as, as his son. Yeah. And as somebody who's given that and telling the story about his family and his mom and dad supporting him, when I went and did this pod, podcast endeavor or speckle truth or whatever, my dad was always the first in line to say, it doesn't quite make sense, but let's go for it. Right. And so Absolutely. it's, it's almost, it's, I've told you this a multiple times since I've been here. It's very surreal to just sit here and talk with you because there are a lot of similarities and a lot of parallels between my upbringing and kind of how you have lived life, you know? Well, I was, you know, my dad, like I said, my dad was a, was a football coach and he was a strict disciplinarian, you know, and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, didn't turn out like my dad probably had wished. My dad was about 6'2", about 190. You know, my grandfather was about 6'2". My mom's like 5'10". Her sister's like 6'1". And I'm like barely 5'7". You know, so, you know, when he's looking at me on the field, he's like, not really quite what I had in mind, you know. But, you know, but, but, but he's a, he's a hustler, you know, sure. type of deal. And that's what, and you know, and that, 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 um, that kind of sets the tone a little bit. That's exactly what I am. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my deal was this, when I started in the business, my deal was this, what is it, what is it that I'm going to be able to do that I can fish as many days a year as I can fish? And, you know, if there's, if there's young guys listening to this, uh, this is, this, this is a good lesson for you here. My, both of my boys get it. They get it. J Ray gets it. Ryan gets it. I mean, they, they didn't have a choice to, but get it. (laughs) I mean, our, they never got to fish on a good day. They got to fish on bad days. Clients call winds blowing, it's raining, thundering, lightning. Guess what? We're going fishing. That's the only days they got to go. They did not get to cherry pick days. They fished really horrible conditions, made them better fishermen. Sure. I'm not one of those people that believe that everybody ought to get an award. It's a, not a popular thing nowadays, but I don't think that I don't think that you should be rewarded for not doing good. I think that rewards are for those that do good and 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 work hard, you know, uh, type of deal. And I know that's not popular, but um, I was always told by my dad and I always told my boys this. I'm a show me person. Don't tell me about it. Show me. And so I've tried my whole life and I have clients tell me this on a daily basis. They'll say you are still trying to prove to us that you can still do it. I said, absolutely. I said, that's what you're paying for. Mm -hmm. You're paying for effort. So, you know, number one to young guys, effort, effort. These people hiring us are professional people. They know when somebody's slacking and when somebody's not. Also, find something that you can do year round. You know, I looked at it as what, you know, we got a 365 day a year fishery here. What is it that I'm going to be able to do Three, on the water 365 days a year? Well, guess what it is? It's lure fishing. You know why it is? Because it's not bait available all the all time. time. All yeah. the time. We always made this comment. And I, you know, and I want to go on record saying I don't have anything against anybody that fishes with bait. I fished with bait. I pride myself in, in this. I can fish with cut crabs, croakers, piggies, cut mullet <laughs> heads, pieces of skipjack. I mean, you know, I am a well-rounded fisherman. I prefer to wade fish and fish with artificial lures. I prefer to target trophy sized trout. And the reason that I do is because I think there's fewer of them and they're harder to catch. It's a bigger challenge. In other words, when, when somebody catches one, they've done something. It's an accomplishment. When somebody's done it on a lure, they've done lots of things. And I tell people this all the time. They say, what do you mean I've done lots of things? I said, look, I said, you chose the lure. 
You made the cast. You put the action on it. You felt the bite. You landed the fish. It was that that moment, that moment in time right there was 100% you. And I said, that's what it's all about. And I said, it's the chase. McBride's always said yes. this to me. McBride's always said this. You've heard it. Dude. Oh, yeah. If you've been around, you've oh, heard yeah. it. You know, and it's, it's, it's the chase. It's the hunt. And it's knowing when and how and why and where. And, and you know what? There's a lot to that. Me and Mike had a conversation this week. I call him a lot uh, to ask him. I'm writing an article. I want his input. You know, I want his input. I said, look, I'm doing a deal on transition. I hate that word, he said. And I'm like, I knew it was coming. You know, you hate that word. He goes, I hate that word. And I said, you know what? I, I don't like the word either. He said, transition's changed, Jay. And he said, tell me something. He said, it's changing every day, isn't it? And I said, by the day, by the hour. So oh we as God. we as we as anglers are in transition and fish are in transition all the, all the time. time. 365 days a year. So oh with that said, we have to be that way. And so I've modeled my business by that. I've modeled my business by this. And in all the seminars that I've done, I tell people this. I said, when you go, you know, here's what people want, Chris. What what a lot of people really want is they want X marks the spot. There's Especially not really, this day and age, there's yeah. not really there's not really such a thing. Not there's really not. Fish move, mm-hmm. bait moves, conditions change, tide levels, tide levels rise, rise and fall. fall, water temperature rises and falls, salinity levels are increased or decreased depending on the year, depending on the day. You know, so so we we've got to we've got to be we've got to be able to to have an open mind and be able to to decipher each day what it is that we need to do for that day. So what you have to do is you have to look at your fishing day the night before as a, as a palette that you painted, you know, maybe we got, you know, we're looking at cow and paintings in right. here and stuff and they've got these beautiful, you know, pictures of fish. That's a, that's a visual. And never, ever young angler, male or female, they have a vision of what's going to happen the next day, where they're going to go, what it's going to be like, but it's not always the case. And in fact, seldom is it the case. So the best thing that I can tell these people, and I tell my clients this every day, is when you wake up in the morning, wipe the palette clean. Let the fish paint the picture. Let the fish paint the picture. And you know, and you get out yeah. there, and you know, I said that, I say this every day. I'll tell somebody, you know, we'll be going, we'll be running the shoreline, not up on the beach, but you know, off the shoreline. Mm-hmm. Um, and they'll say, what are you looking for? I said, everything. Where are we going today, Captain J? Which I hate the Captain J thing, really. Sorry. I'm, no, no, no. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I don't know why I don't like it. I just like to be known as J. Yeah. I like the guide word. The guide word kind of does something for me, you know. Yeah. But J, you know, I like, that's just, that's who I am. Sure. And because, um, um, you know, it's, you know, let's face it, that boat's sitting out in that driveway out there. My, my, my 10 year old grandson can run it and he's not a captain, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, type of deal. I mean, he's not, yeah. you know, uh, now his grandfather is, you know, he, he's a, he's a, a bar pilot. He runs big ships, super tankers. He's a captain. That's right. He's yeah, captain. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> off of that, but anyway, so I, I tell him, I said, look, we're looking. And I said, hey, I'll be, we may be talking about who, who the NFL leading rusher is. And I'll say, see that slick pop right there. That's a spook slick. What do you mean? Well, the boat spooked him. Why do you know the boat spooked him? I said, well, it, it wasn't there five seconds ago and the noise of the boat spooked the fish or see those mullet, how those mullet jumped up in front of us. That's a school of fish in deep water that we just pushed. Um, you just pull in here and fish here. That wasn't on my radar until then. Now, if you're, driving with blinders on or you're sure. following your GPS. You yes, never see yeah. that. You never see that. And so uh, all of this, that some of the stuff we talk about tonight are things that took years and years and years. I had to go by seeing that slick pop up for eight or 10 years before I realized what was making it. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, why is that? I had to, you know, see those mullet 70 yards out in front of the boat, umbrella out of the water for years and years and years before I, before I realized that's a school of reds that I pushed that didn't spook. They, they bumped, right. They didn't spook, but, but those mullet know they are moving. Yeah. And, you know, and so, and then you, you put pieces together. Yeah. And so, so when we, when we say that, you know, we talk that, that comes to the, the full circle deal, which is where 
which is probably what your listeners are interested in, where we're at today. Today is an industry. You know, yeah, as a yeah, as we are. And and um and I have come I have come full circle. I mean, me and you've talked about this a, a lot. I didn't start out, Chris, as a guy that said, uh, now we're going to let all the big ones go. You know, I started out, and I want people to know this because it's it's important. It adds credibility and it adds vali- uh, uh, validity. validity to what you're saying. I started out with putting them on a string and them slinging over my back and taking a picture of them and saying, look how good I am. That's exactly where I started, you know, because I said, more is better. Mm-hmm. Okay. And for years and years, we did that. We didn't have the science that we have today. Yeah. We would, and I say this with not any ounce of, of, of um, I don't know what the word is, um, um, you know, anger toward our parks and wildlife because I respect those people. But in that those days, there weren't very many people fishing. There weren't very many guides. There was like six. Mm-hmm. Guides here. Yeah. You know how many there are in Rockport right now? And they're in, in the tri area. I, no. I asked this the other day. 419. Oh my God. 419. 419. Okay, now that's Corpus, Aransas, Aransas. Pass, Rockport, Ingleside, uh, Austwell, you know, I mean, because we're the region headquarters. But 419. And I, I, I mean, I guess two something, and, it, you know, I was shocked. But there weren't very many. So the pressure on the fishery wasn't anything like it is today. Uh, there weren't near as many boats. Boats didn't run as fast. They didn't run as shallow. Uh, rods, reels weren't. You know, we didn't have any of the stuff that we really, 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 really have. So what? When the Parks and Wildlife people would tell us, when we would say at a Doc Creel survey, we would say, "Golly, man, you know, y'all, we've caught. There's a group of us here. We've caught 300 mm-hmm. today. How long can this last?" And their their answer was, "You're not going to mm-hmm. hurt them with a rod and reel because." At that level of fishing, with the few of us out there, you weren't going to. Mm-hmm. Well, now there are literally thousands of people fishing on any given day up and down the Texas coast. So across the decades, though, as you've seen the transition go from very few guides to a lot of guides in the industry, and knowing your background as a kind of catch them, sling them, and then throw them in a cooler. Uh, having that mentality initially, was there a point though in that career and through that duration of time that you were like, this is the moment that I'm just going to be more conservation minded. And from, from what I know of you, the, the just keep five mentality. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's not a secret, you know, that I was the guy that coined the phrase, just keep five. I mean, that was here, here was, here was my, my simplistic look at things. And I, it was at a, it was at a scoping meeting. And I said, I made the comment, uh, I asked how many trout are on the Texas coast. And I don't remember the number, but it was something like 13 and a half million on the Texas coast. And I said, would you say 10% of those trout are of legal size? I already knew what the answer was. Hmm. And the guy said, no, they're not. I said, more or less. He said, less. I said, let's just go with 10%. That would be 1.3 million. I said, how many license sales this year? It was, you know, a million or so. Yeah. And my comment was, you better hope nobody, ca- you better hope that everybody doesn't catch one. And I said, let me ask you something. I don't know anything about the science of this, but how can keeping less equate to having less? You know, of course the naysayers were, well, then you have a freeze and then it kills all of them. Well, if you really think that way, if that's the way you think and you got a 401k, go cash it in. Cause you could get, you could be in a car wreck tomorrow hmm. and be dead. Uh, you know, the stock yeah. market yeah. could crash. If you think that way and you're a deer hunter, go shoot every deer on your place opening morning, you know, uh, that, that's, that's not, that's not a, that's not a proactive way to think. And in my, honestly, Chris, mine was a selfish it was a selfish thought i'm sitting there thinking and i couldn't believe that the it was hard for me to believe that a lot of the guys weren't on board with me sure because simplistically i was saying this come on guys that's less fish to clean, <laughs> clean. Yep. it's 30 minutes less at the dock you know if, if you're fishing with bait it's less bait you know it's less it's less kelly wigglers less and expense. less mass assassins yeah. and less mirror lures and i'm gonna use because in those days you know we didn't we, I started out with Kelly Wiggler, you know, just a little 
plug for Wayne yeah, Davis Wayne. there, buddy, <laughs> type of deal. But, you know, but any, anyway, uh, um, you know, I w- my deal was it's just going to be it's going to be less work and more fish. In other words, my retirement fund, which are fish, right. they were there was going to be more of them left. And, you know, and you sit there and you think, golly, there's there's 10 of us here today. That's 50 a day. That's 50 a day. That What is that at the end of a seven day week? Mm hmm. Come on, guys. That's thirty-five. That's three hundred fifty. Yeah, <laughs> we're talking about lots of we're talking about lots and lots and lots of fish, lots of. And if you start multiplying the 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 forever pound and a half of body mass for a female, you got a million eggs. I mean, it, the it you know the numbers get get just stupid crazy type of deal. Um, but you're not yeah. working yourself out of a job or yeah, catching yeah. yourself you're not, out you're of not, a job. You're not fishing yeah. yourself okay. out of a fishing career type of deal. Uh, and, you know, and, and then there was a, I don't know, I, I think it, I think it happened in tournaments, uh, really, really and truly. I think it happened in tournaments and, and I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this, this, and it, and I, it, it's, it's sometimes hard for me to talk about, but it was the absolute, it was the absolute best thing that ever happened to me. Me and my, my oldest son started fishing, fishing tournaments. Mm-hmm. I had always fished fishing tournaments, had been extremely lucky in all kinds of tournaments. I had, I had been, I mean, come on, it, there's, there was some luck to it. I mean, you know, uh, there was, but, uh, my youngest son had gone off to college. And so, and I always tell people this, I said, I feel bad. I said, because J Ray got the best of dad while Ryan was off getting an education. Now Ryan was off winning national championships in the bass world while me and J Ray were, you know, <laughs> trying to win redfish tournaments. So it didn't really quite compare. He was doing his thing, sure. but me and J Ray struggled. I mean, man, we struggled. And when I say struggled, we would lead from day one to day three mm-hmm. and then zero. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about just not do good, do terrible, hmm. you know, and, and, and what, what people didn't see, what people didn't see was, was our struggle. And my struggle was J Ray was 19 I was his hero and I was letting him down. Mm-hmm. You know, he was, he was like, golly, you know, we're going to win $40,000 on Saturday. We are two pounds up. All we got to do is get back on that same school. But I had a way that I wanted to do it and I wanted to do it my way. I wasn't a burning guy. I was to put the trolling motor down, go out Gross. there, see those little, see those little mullet jumping 70 yards out there. There's the school there in four foot of water. We're going to ease up on them and, and we're going to catch them. And we would, well, Saturday roll around, there'd be a whole lot more boats running <laughs> yeah. around, you know, and that didn't really work very well. And so I would break his heart. I mean, we would go and they'd put us on TV. You know, people say you've had all these great things. I've had way, way more bad things happen. Stand, imagine this stand in your hometown with your new wife, your mother, your, your, your friends at Walmart in the parking lot leading the FLW two days in a row and pull the black thing off of it. And there's nothing in that, in that deal. And I, I, nothing. And now let me tell you what, let me tell you what. I was going to ask you with tournament trail. And so yeah. the funny thing is I remember watching these yeah. TV shows. And, right? and, and, yeah. and somebody asked me one time, Somebody asked me one time. We were sitting there, and you know, if you've watched, if you've watched ESPN two, you know, B A S S. Redfish. Well, they had. I fished all of them. Yeah, I fished the. I fished the old boy Alberta. Old boy I fished Alberta, the. Yeah. I fished the IFA. I fished the FLWs. We fished the Texas Redfish series. You know, we fished. We fished them all, and uh, the FLW was very, very, and 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 so was the old boy Alberta. Ex- extremely. Um, public orientated you know you they interviewed you it was live tv and i remember after i remember after the very first one where where we were on absolute winning fish and we zero damn we zero let me tell you how bad it was our cameraman caught one in the back of the boat (laughs) i mean i'm like looking at him like really you're fishing while and you know and he caught one i'm like really but anyway anyway so that evening when they interviewed me the lady said to me, she said, so, uh, golly, Mr. Watkins, what's your game plan for tomorrow? I said, same. I said, we're going to go to the same area. I said, we're going to work really hard. And I said, uh, probably going to throw up a huge number. I said, they'll probably eat 
for us, you know, tomorrow. Uh, I said, they didn't today. I said, fish are in there. Sure enough, we had the heaviest weight of the second day, which didn't do any good. Yeah. And so when she interviewed me, she said, well, here you are. You're sitting here with almost 17 pounds on day two. If you could have just caught two keepers on day, on day one. one, you would have probably won. And she said, so, uh, you know, what, you know, what are your thoughts? And I, you know, went through the whole deal positive. Hey man, you know, it's fishing. Don't always win. You don't always, you don't always produce no matter who you are, yeah. you know, type of deal. They build you up to be something you're really not, you know, I mean, they're like, you know, well, you know, they interview you and they put all these big braggadocious things about you that you didn't really say, but anyway, and, and, and kind of can intimidate you. So she asked me, she said, so your son's very young. And I said, yes, he is. And she said, but he's, you know, fishing with you. And she said, so what's, what's the deal? And I said, he's the best angler I know. Yeah. And she goes, really? She said, so what he's really good at is, is fishing. And I said, no, what he's really good at is being a son. That's awesome. God. And that is me in a nutshell. That that's me in a nutshell. You know, as I got older, and and I got successful. I fell in love with them. I fell in love with those bigger trout and every single thing about them. And for the life of me, I said, you know, I, I was I was at a I was at a I was at a, a funeral one time uh, of a buddy of mine. Seems like I go to a lot of funerals, but nowadays. And I was at and, and I thought to myself when when we were riding back from the funeral, I thought to myself what am I going to, what am I going to leave? What am I going to be known for? You know, am I going to be known for, you know, for catching a whole bunch of fish every single day and leaving nothing, you know, or am I going to be known for, for leaving something? And so that was probably, that was probably, it probably, it probably started maybe about 15 to 18 years ago. Uh, and really, and truly some of it started with, so it really started with my son, Ryan, because Ryan was like a bass fisherman. And Ryan's like, dad, you know, we don't keep bass. Yeah. We don't, we don't keep bass. And I said, well, that's because bass aren't good eating. He goes, no, no, that's not true. He goes, when I was in college, we ate plenty of them <laughs> yeah. because we didn't have any money. And he said, they're plenty good to eat. He said, but no, he goes, you know, he said, bass fishermen have a it's love mindset. affair with the fish, you know? And so, so then I got, you know, then I got this, this ideal that, and this, this, emotional deal about them. And then I, then I started thinking, you know, I, I was letting these fish go. I was promoting to people to let them go. I was saying, look, I'm not against keeping fish at all. If you need fish, keep some fish, keep the smaller ones, let the bigger ones go. And there's a lot of people that were, there's a, there was a lot of people that were, were on that, that same, that same page. And, 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 and then and then I started noticing, and I you laugh at this. And then I started noticing that it seemed like I was catching more of them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so then, I, so then I'm starting to say, hey, wait a minute. I got There's that, something. Yeah. They're, they're, I got mojo here. I got trout sure. mojo. These they they understand. No, they don't. They don't. Let's just face it. They don't. But in my mind, I think they do. I think they understand that that this person has a passion for for me. And I've got a really good chance of, of, I've got a really good chance of swimming this one yeah. and, and getting off. And, you know, I got, I got, I got stories that, that I, that I could tell you of experiences with some of my customers that, you know, a lot of the young guys would, they would even maybe, even maybe, um, not Ryan and, and J Ray, but maybe some kids that are their age that would maybe scoff a little bit at it. It's an emotional thing. Absolutely. It's an emotional thing. So I, I just wrote an article in Louisiana Sportsman. It actually is coming out in October. And just recently, I caught a 30-inch trout fishing with my son um, Huge on, a, on a Ned rig. Huge Ooh. moment. So <laughs> he's 10 years old. We go out fishing. And we're just fishing a spot trying to catch numbers. This is a second wade fishing trip. He's fished with me a lot. But it's that was the rite of passage, yeah. just taking him on his first wade fishing trip. And we had great success catching numbers. We even kept a few, yeah, right? Because yeah. that's responsible. Yeah. And so the, the next time, actually, we were watching a football game. And he looks over to me because I don't store my fishing season until 1 October. And he looks at me and says, Dad, you want to go fishing tomorrow? I said, absolutely. And so we went. 
you know, looked at the weather, it was perfect. And so the cylinder, I didn't even look at it, Todd didn't even look at it. And turns out it was actually the worst cylinder, the worst Todd, like it was the worst time of the yeah. month. But we went as a father and a son, and, and this will get to my point. Catching some trout, we finally dialed in these fish on a secondary ledge down deep. And all of a sudden, I, I stick a fish, and it just so happens to be this 30-inch yeah. trout. Not thinking that that was even remotely possible, one in the spot, and let alone on the day. But here's here's the connection, right? And this is, this is I think, the speckle truth community in a nutshell and why it's so important and so incredible to have you here is because when I hooked that fish, she came up and shook. And my son, who knows very little about speckled trout, but he knows his dad loves them. Yeah. And he's more excited for me. He's like, Dad, that's a that's a 30 inch fish. I'm like, son, it's not a 30. You know, I knew it was a good fish. Yeah. And sure enough, we got her up to the shore. We took a my seamstress tape and she yeah. was 30 inches. But here's here's where it was emotional for me. Is he never said, let's keep her. He said, we're going to release her. I said, absolutely. And so I eased her off. She started kind of just meandering off the flat. And he's about he's about knee deep and he's to, up to my shoulder and I'm only 5'10". And so he, I'm sitting on the mangrove bank and I'm looking at him and I'm watching my son. It's almost like him walking a dog mm-hmm. out to deep water. And then he finally kind of gets her out there and he starts walking back to me and he says, she was beautiful. <laughs> That's awesome. And <laughs> That's awesome. You're yeah. like, and so talk about just an emotional connection, one between father and son. And then secondly is just this passion and a, for all intensive purposes, I talked about it, my dad, kind of a love affair or like we see it in our family is almost like a sibling like yeah. trophy oh, yeah. trout are a sibling to yeah. us. Yeah, it, 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 well, the, the thing about it is that they are, here's what I tell people all the time. I fish a lot. I mean, I fish 250 plus days a year. And, and when I was really, really charging at it, man, there was years I was pushing 300. Good gosh. And you don't see many of them. That's what people don't realize. We just don't see that many of them, especially, especially in Rockport. You know, there are, we do catch them, you know, we don't see many of them, but the, the thing about it, that the thing about it to me is, uh, you know, that, that hits home to me is that, you know, it's immediately when you are a customer or whoever, when you catch one like that, immediately when you release that fish, immediately you've given back, you've given back what most, and I, and I challenge people this way on the boat. You've given back what most people cannot. And and the reason is it's a it's a mindset. Mm-hmm. You know, the the mindset is, you know, um, and I and, and, and I won't and I, like I said, I can't reiterate it enough. You know, I I have been guilty of all of it. I mean, you know, I don't break game laws and stuff like that, but yeah. I've been guilty of all of it. I've sure. been guilty of, you know, um taking pictures and hey, look at me type of deal, you know, and, and in the name of business and guess what? It's wrong. Sure. It's, it's just wrong, you know, and, and took me a long, long time to get to where I'm at and I don't force it down somebody's throat, but I do say this to, for instance, our, the guys that we have that go to Mansfield, me and Jay Ray both, the rule is, and those people know what the rule is. The rule is they go back. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I had a guy, no I had a guy, I had a guy tell me on the boat, I had a guy tell me on the boat last year. He said, well, if I catch, if I catch 10 pounder, I'm not letting her go. And I said, oh yeah, you are. <laughs> and he goes, and if I don't, I said, well, you are. And I said, and just you thinking that you're not is already putting you at the bottom of the list to <laughs> go again type of deal. I said, cause I know there's people out there that will. And I, I, I one of my best stories, one of my best stories about a client is, is a, a, a story with Mike Laskowski. We call him big Mike because mm-hmm. he's humongous, <laughs> you know, and Mike, <laughs> yeah. And, and Mike and his family, uh, uh Lisa and, uh, Michael and Lindsay, they fish as a family. They love to fish. They live to fish the, the, the son, the daughter, they're excellent, you know, anglers and they're, they're conservationists, you know, they, uh, they, 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 they let them swim. Yeah. Anyway, we were in Mansfield a few years back and terrible day. John Blaha's with us. <laughs> terrible day. 
it's blowing. I don't know what it's blowing, but that's blowing 30. I think it's blowing. It's yeah. the water is just putrid in color. And Mike hooks this fish in dirty water, uh, you know, bites the fish, you know, fish acts like a red, gets the fish up there. And, you know, and it is obviously that trout of a lifetime, you know, a true 30, you know, plus inch fish, nine something. And uh, Blaha's there, Lisa's there, I'm there. It's, I mean, it's cold. Yeah. I've got pictures. I mean, you know, I mean, our cheeks are red, <laughs> red yeah. you know, hands just frigid. It's cold. And we catch this fish and weigh the fish, you know, put a, put a, put a measurement on him, you know, get the fish back in the water, release the fish, you know, and I look at, I look at Mike and Mike's looking at me and, and I said, and I told, I, I told him, you know, I said, I said, Mike, I said, now me and you have a moment in this group. We have a moment that nobody can take away from us ever. I said this in this moment, I said, we have a moment, you know, and big old, big old alligator tears, you know, yeah. of course I cry easy, but now <laughs> big Mike don't cry for nothing, but you know, big old tears, you know, in his eyes, you know, he puts his big old paws around me, you know, almost breaks my neck, hugging my neck, you know, type of deal. And I think the reward, here's what people don't realize. The true reward is knowing that you did something that's so hard for other people to do. Sure. And it's the right thing to do. Right. It's the right thing to do. You know, some science would argue that, well, you know, that fish is at the end of her life. Yeah, she probably is. And guess what? She deserves to go to out go the out. way she wants to go out. Yes. She deserves to go out, not on a, not on a stringer, not on a fillet knife. Sure. Oh, do, 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 do big fish, do big fish get hooked and die? Absolutely. Uh, do I suggest that if you catch a, 10 pound trout and it dies that you leave it on the bottom for the crabs. No, I don't suggest that type of deal, but do everything that you can do. Science tells us that they in cold water, they survive better than we think they do. Interesting. Uh, they, they does Greg stunts, Greg stunts. I've yeah. been lucky to do some stuff with him and, and science says that they're hardier than what we think. You know, if you leave them alone, you know, if they'll swim, if they'll swim, they're, they're odds. They're good are, to go. And, and here, well, let's put it this way. They're better. They're not going to live in that box. hundred <laughs> percent. They're not living in that box. You know, I had a, I had a instance, uh, with Jay Ray a couple of years ago where he caught 11 pound fish. Uh, I had caught an 11 pound fish that year. And, uh, my guys still talk about that. They said, what was amazing to us was the emotion. Once you let the fish go, the emotion, when you turn to us and you said, you know, me and her aren't going to probably ever see each other again. You know, we, 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 we won't see each other ever again. And it took 40, almost 40 years for me to see her the first time. And, you know, I, and I, and that night I told J Ray the story, you know, and J Ray was just like, you know, I, he was like, golly, you know, and he, he, he saw the fish. I mean, you know, uh, he actually weighed the fish, I think. But anyway, um, a month later in the exact, same general exact same area i'm standing next to him and he catches a, a fish that's actually a quarter of a pound heavier than that fish wow. you know and and you know i i said what are you gonna do bud that is an absolute toad monster yeah and he said i'm gonna let her go he said i you know you know and i gotta tell you you know as a dad as a sportsman, you know, knowing and feeling somewhat guilty about all the things that you had allowed to happen on your boat. Not, they weren't bad things. They were just, we just weren't being proactive. Right. To, to, to see that, that you had something to do with that. People say, well, you know, it was his choice. It was his choice, but you know what? You know what? J Ray, J Ray wanted to make me happy as well. And he wanted to do the right thing because he knows that very few young guys, his age, 30 years old are going to do that. And he was rewarded two days later when he called me and he said, Hey dad, so where are you at? And I said, well, I'm just pulling back into to Mansfield. I've been to the grocery store. He said, well, I got a hook in my hand. 
down here. He said, uh, about six, seven miles north of town. He said, it's pretty bad. And I said, okay, I'm on my way. So I put the boat in the water. He goes, you got some dikes, right? And I said, yeah. He goes, oh, bring your camera. <laughs> and I said, why? He said, well, I got one about 10 and three quarters that was on the, oh one of those gosh. hooks. And he goes, she's perfect. She's in the live well. She's, she's perfect. He said, but I want to get a picture of her. So I went back, cut the hook out, jerked the rest of it out. And his reward for letting the first fish go was the second fish. And his reward next time on the third one will be because he let the first two go. Sure. Uh, you know, you know, I know there's people out there that don't believe like that, but I think most fish fishermen, I think most hunters are superstitious and we, I, I, I believe it. I believe it's mojo. Sure. And, you know, I, I believe it, I believe it is. And, and, you know, I try to, I try to surround myself with people that feel the same way. And, you know, and I, and I, and I, and I restate this, don't want people listening to this to think that those of us that want you to let these big fish go or want you to let a three pounder go that you don't need, that we think there's something wrong with you keeping fish to eat that you need. We do not. We do, yep. we do not. That is, that is management. We understand that. But what we're, what we're, what we, what we need to do is we need to change the mindset that you need to kill these bigger fish for reasons that don't have anything to do with food they're not they're not good to eat when they're that big if it's a facebook share or like or an instagram post and all that stuff if that's the motive we we are the antithesis of that that is that is not what well and 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 that that's what i think the industry to some extent is promoting right It, it and maybe i'll remove the soapbox here in a sec but like It's unfortunate because I feel like that's kind of the promotion aspect of it. And I get it. I understand that. But on the same token is, is again, as a human, as as somebody who's privileged to take care of or or fish a resource, we got to take care of it because nobody else is, right? And so if that's your motive, I think that's a little off kilter with what we're talking about, which is responsible harvest. You can do that. Yeah. And you know, I, I, and I do see this and I want to tell you what, I'm new to Instagram. I've had an Instagram deal about... I don't know. I didn't ever do Facebook because uh, it was too much work. Uh, Instagram seemed easy to me until J Ray said, J- dad, you see those like 36 little arrows up in the top. Those are messages. And I'm like, what? He goes, those are people that are mad because you're not answering their, you know. but, but, but you know what? I do like, I do, I do like the likes. I do like the fact that people will see something, but what I try to do, what I try to do is I try to, I try to show photos most of the time that are that that represent the truth you know what you'll see on my you know what you'll see you'll see a lot of you'll see 99.9 percent of all the big fish released you know what every once in a while you'll see a stringer picture Mm -hmm. of a group of guys that are down here um for a family reunion they're going to eat trout and you know why i put them on there because it's real it's real Hey everyone, I'd like to take a small break to sincerely thank our podcast sponsors. As you know, we're a brand about sharing the passion and pursuit of trophy speckled trout, as well as our conservation. Fortunately for us, Mirror Lore, Texas Custom Lures, and the original Custom Corky support that same passion, which is evident through the support of this podcast. Simply put, without these brands, none of this would be possible. And we're incredibly appreciative, and we hope you are too. Now, let's get back to the discussion. You know, I had a, I had a, I've been very, very lucky with sponsorship in my career. Um, and I've always said this uh, uh, about, about sponsorship, you know, credibility is a hard thing. And uh, I would tell my sponsors when we were fishing in tournaments, I would say, you know, right now, you know, a guy would call me and say, gosh, you know, I saw y'all caught some fish, but you didn't catch them on our lures. You understand that? I said, nope, we didn't. I said, we didn't because that's not what they were biting. I said, and what we what we said on stage was the truth. We said what we caught them on. And I said, and the reason we do that is so that when we're using yours and we say it up there, people believe us. People believe us. And so what I want, what I what I want people yeah. social media wise to know is that what we're trying to do is we're trying to show <laughs> you something that's that's it's that, real. that's real. It's, that's real. There's hey, truth. I had, I had guys today, they wanted to keep some fish. I said, okay we're going to try to catch some good fish and then we're going to go catch some eaters 
15 and a half, 16 inch. They're going to be nice little chunky ones. They were perfectly happy catching those fish. They were perfectly happy letting the 20 inch fish go, go that we caught type of deal. Um, yeah. um, you know, so we're, we're at, we're at that, we're at that, um, uh, see, I don't know what the word is. Crossroad. Yeah, it's crossroad, but that, that pushing point to where, you know, as anglers, as responsible anglers, as, um, as the word steward, yeah, the word stewards, you know, ranchers, uh, these big ranches, the ones that have survived in Texas, the reason they've survived is because the owners are stewards of the land. They take care of the land. Mm-hmm. They take care of everything that lives on the land. They don't overgraze it. They don't overburn it. They don't overcultivate it. Uh, they're stewards. And, I, and, and that's a great word. And I think that's what we have to be in the Bay as anglers. We have to be stewards. And, and uh, I don't think that, I don't think that negative, that negative barking, sure. complaining, for me, it, for me as a kid, it didn't work. It didn't work. And I, I, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, I've told you this before, but everybody needs to needs to hear it. And and I've used it. My dad told me one time fishing on the Copano Causeway. That's where my dad could talk to me. My mom would tell me your dad was going to take you fishing. Well, I always knew that. It, I didn't always know, but. After the fact, I realized there was something that he needed to talk to me about. Sometimes it was who I was hanging around with. Yeah. Sometimes it was just maybe my grades or whatever, but it was a subtle thing. You know, yeah. I was that kid that would go to the light and talk a blue streak. Of course, everybody would leave, which was yeah. perfect for my dad. Now we have this light all to ourselves because, you know, this little talkative burr headed kids doesn't run all the fishermen <laughs> off of it. You know, so we got this whole light to ourselves yeah. on the causeway. That's funny. He told me one time we we're standing there fishing. And he says, you know, J. Ray, he said, I think I was probably maybe a freshman. He said, you know, J. Ray, he said, I don't know if you heard. He said, two boys in town got arrested last night and uh, and uh, down at the beach. And I said, oh, I didn't hear what happened. He goes, yeah. He said, I, he goes, I think they were down there at the point, you know. He said, uh, you know, drinking. And I said, yeah, well, you know, they do that down there. He goes, yeah, he said, they got arrested. He said, the old sheriff took them in, the, in, there, to, in there and put them in jail. They, you know, gave him a little while before they were going to call their parents. And he said, one of those boys said to the sheriff, he said, my old man's going to kill me. And he said, and the other boy said, this is going to kill my old man. And I said, my dad paused for about a minute. And he said, which boy are you? So, so in, so in the fishery, I ask you this, which boy are you? You know, somewhere along the line. And hey, let me tell you what, it, 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 it was it was hard for me and I lost some clients over it. Uh, but I gained some clients that would have never fished with me before because they would have felt like I would have been that guy that was influencing them to keep them. And like I said, I got clients that still want to keep fish and I and I know who they are. And guess what? Their work's in progress. Their work's in progress, but positive, positive things have always worked good for me. And so my deal is this, I'm not going to post on social media or at the dock. I'm not going to post something about the way somebody's holding the fish, the way somebody's releasing a fish because by God, they're trying, trying. they are trying, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be that guy. I'm going to be the, I'm going to try to be the guy that says, Hey man, encourage and and, and encourage encourage it and and i think the only way to do that is is to is to do it by setting you know setting an example uh you know i'm extremely proud of my clientele i'm proud of my kids you know that they've they've embraced this you know some of the guys that were raised in big fish fisheries they were doing it a long time ago cliff webb was doing a long time ago doug bird was doing it billy sheka was doing it uh, you know, David Rousey was doing it. I mean, Rousey's doing it to, to the point that sometimes I think I need some damn boxing gloves. I mean, <laughs> and I love him. He is my, he, he's one of my heroes. David Rousey is one of my heroes. I mean, he is an absolute, he yeah. is an absolute stud. I mean, don't have no if fans or buts about it. Smokes, he he yeah. is a stud. I mean, you know, there's, there's legends and then there's studs and he's a stud. I'm <laughs> telling you, I mean, he is, you know, and I love him and me and David, you know, we don't ever, there, no conversation ever. This is, this is where, this is where we want you, 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 you younger anglers to get with your, with your, your, your buddies and that, and their wives that 
that you fish with, you spend time at a cabin with, you spend time on a pier with, you spend time in a boat with. We hope that your fishing brings you together to where when you leave each other every weekend, you tell each other that you love them. You know, people say, people are like, golly, that, you know, I can't believe guys do that. David Rousey never hangs up the phone without telling me he loves me. <laughs> Cliff Webb either, you know. Uh, I got a buddy of mine. Now, Lowell, he ain't going to say it. <laughs> Lowell ain't going to say it. He's not going to say it. Okay. And I'll tell him. He'll be getting out of the car, and I'll say, hey, man, I love you. I said, I know. I know. You're not ready to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? He's coming He's coming around he, type of deal. And and so again. so what you what – you, I think what you hope, what hopefully what people are getting from this podcast is that what we've, what I've, where I'm at today is, is me coming full circle. I still got, I still got some way, ways, you know, way to go. And what I mean way to go is, you know, better, better ways to, better ways to, to promote it, better ways to teach people angling skills. And, and, you know, the only way, the only way you ever get, to the point to where you're, you let that five and a half year old 10 point walk, or you let that seven and a half pound fish go, or that four pound fish go, or that 10 pound fish go. The only way you ever get there is by getting good enough to where you catch enough of them that you respect the degree of, of difficulty it is to catch them and that you, and you've reached that and you reward them for, letting you catch them because let me tell you what they don't always play ball. <laughs> they are a, a trout in excess of about 27 to 28 inches can be the most finicky, unpredictable thing in there is to catch. And, and you know what? Then I've seen them, I've seen them just be stupid, you know, but not very often. Sure. I had one yesterday. I had one yesterday about 27 and a half inches sight cast into a oversized red told the guy i said hey look at this red right here watch this i just flipped it underhand to him cranked it by her and the red and the red just kind of looked and and acknowledged it and that trap came right out from underneath <laughs> it that i never saw and yeah. just, poof, just grabbed it and i told the guy so you're not believing this i said this is a trout that's on here and i said uh, i said about a six pounder i said really really good fish i said this goes to show you, you know you never know and of course we 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 quickly we I had my camera. We shot a little video over, let her go. She swam off type of deal. But I think, I do think this, I think that, I think that, uh, I'm, I'm going to say this about the young generation. I think the very young generation, the kids that I get on my boat that are from say seven to nine and up, they are more than willing to let them go. They got zero problems with it. And the reason that they, reason that they do is that I think, I think the one thing that, that, that I've seen that's a common denominator is most of those kids have parents that, that maybe had dads and, or grandpas that came full circle, or maybe they saw fishing in their area because of fishing pressure become less. And, and maybe they've listened to podcasts. Maybe they read articles. Uh, maybe they've, they've, they've seen it. Sure. They've seen the, they've seen the lack of results and said, you know, where, 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 you know, what are we going to do? And, and here's the thing that bass fishermen did, and they still do. And, and we can do it too. Right. It doesn't matter what the law says. It doesn't matter. Dude. On, a, on lots of bass lakes, it doesn't matter if you can keep five or six fish. They don't keep them. They keep one or they don't keep any. Mm-hmm. We can do that. We can do that with our, we can do that with our bays. You know, the Parks Wildlife, they, they have an extremely tough job. They do a great job with it. You know, Greg Stunts at the Hart Institute, he's awesome. I mean, you know, they've got, we've got more knowledge and more information out there than we've ever had. And we have to use it. You know, we have to use it because when I, when I, when I die and when they, you know, bury me, I hope somebody says he left something Yeah. and he didn't just leave us with fishing stories or pictures of a bunch of fish. He, he left us with an ideal that maybe this is really the way we should go. I think it feels good for me. It seems to be working for me. You know, I, I, I have I have guides, Chris, tell me all the time at the dock. I heard it today. You know, you got the best clientele in the world. And you know, I I, I think about it once in a while. They're right. <laughs> yeah. They're right. But but that said, I've worked to get, to get that. Say. I've worked to get that clientele, but not in a 
in a negative type of way, in a suggestive way, in a suggestive way. You know, Jay Ray always tells stories because I can be grumpy at the dock because I don't, I like people being ready. I want somebody ready to play. I don't want the guy to show up with his rod and his reel, the reel not on the rod, no line on the reel, sure. no wading boots. I want him to, because my dad would tell me this when I got, when I was five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, couldn't even sleep at night. Put my, put my little blue jean shorts on, had my little Converse tennis shoes that I waded in, set by the side of the bed, you know, had my little t-shirt, you know, with my baseball cap, my RF baseball cap. I couldn't even sleep the night before we were going fishing in the morning. You know, we didn't have a boat. We're going to walk. We're going to go out to Highway 35, walk down Cabasso Creek for four miles into St. Charles Bay and get bled to death by mosquitoes. (laughs) But we might catch one. Yeah. You know, we might catch one. I don't remember much. I don't remember much of the, of the catching, but I remember every bit of the experience. I remember everything about my dad. I remember every story. I remember every can of Vienna sausages. I remember every can of sardines, you know, every, every, every pack of crackers. You know, I remember on the way home stopping at, 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 at Wyatt's grocery and, 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 and getting a, getting an RC or getting a Coke, you know, uh-huh. I don't really remember if we caught anything, yeah. but I remember going fishing with my dad, you know, and it's so important for people nowadays to take their significant, the people that are important, doesn't have to be your daughter, doesn't have to be your son, somebody that's important to you. It, it's, it's, it's important to, 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 to go make those, make those memories and influence them in a positive way. You know, hey, I tell parents this all the time. You know, look, there's no predators out here. You know, we got to shuffle a little bit for stingrays. Alligators ain't a problem. We're going to see some. They're really not a problem. Sharks, not a problem for us. But boy, if you let your kid go to the movies without you, yeah, predators, Watch out. there's predators around every <laughs> corner. Yeah. Every corner. And I'm, I'm just a, I'm a believer in that. And I think yeah. fish, you know, I think fishing is the ultimate sport. I really do. I'm not it's trying to defend, a- I'm not trying to defend any of the other sports out there, but it's, um, the way I choose to do it. It's, 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 it's all the angler. I mean, you know, you, you, you gotta, you gotta do it yourself. I had a, a guy tell me one day came in and he goes, man, I don't know how you do it. And I said, what? Well, he's, yeah, you know, I had these guys and he said, you know, I had a young kid there, we're waiting with lures, and he said, we're not catching them, you know, and this boat pulls in, and he goes, they got croakers, and he goes, they get out, and they just start bailing them, and I said, yeah, I said, it happens, and I said, but, you know, you got to make them understand that that's not what they're doing, well, they don't understand that, and I said, well, you know, so I had a fish or two to clean, and he had five or six fish, yeah. nine fish he was cleaning, so I'm over there cleaning fish, little boy standing next to me, and I said, did you have fun today? The kid goes, you can yeah. tell he's a little shy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, didn't know me. Yeah. I said, yeah, I said, it's a pretty tough day out there. I said, it's hot, you know, just didn't bite good for us. And he goes, yeah, not for us either. I said, you got a dog? And he goes, yes, yeah, sir, I have a dog. I said, uh, when you go home, stop at Walmart. And I said, go in there. And I said, buy a real hamburger and a rubber one. And I said, when you get home, I said, throw it on the floor and see which one he eats. I said, you were fishing with rubber ones today. And I said, and he's not going to eat that. I said, but there'll be days when he will pick it up. I said, but he probably won't if he's got the choice. <laughs> I said, so I said, don't worry about it. I said, you did awesome today. I said, because you were trying to trick them and make them eat yeah. a rubber hamburger. You yeah. know, and he just smiled and yeah, laughed, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And of course, the other guy, he starts laughing. He's never thought about it that way. I said, heck yeah. <laughs> I said, heck yeah. I said, you know, yeah, you got to understand it's it's harder. It's harder. And I got to encourage that though, you especially encourage that. younger anglers. Hey, like, Hey, that's a difficult feat. It's, it is a difficult thing. It is not an easy yeah. feat to, you know, to accomplish. Um, when my boys were guiding with me at six, seven, eight years old, they would go fishing with me and my clients. And one of my clients that passed away about a few years later, he told me, he said, let me tell you the best comment, uh, J Ray. He said, I believe it was J Ray. He said, ever made to me. He said, might've been Ryan, but I'm not sure. He said, we were having a really tough day and you had gone back to get the boat. And he said, I said to Jay Ray or Ryan, he said, why do you think your dad won't let us use croakers? And Ryan says, because he don't need them. Heck yeah. <laughs> and he said, I thought to myself, you know what? He's right. He said, if I work hard enough and I get to the level and I got nothing against croakers, 
could be popping cork and shrimp. It could be anything. Whatever. But yeah. Whatever. But when you get to the level that is that, you know, higher level, guess what? You won't need them. People said to me, so, well, you grew up fishing with lures because, and that's why you're biased. I said, no, I grew up in a poor family that couldn't afford bait. I said, we had a, we had one car. I said, it was a Galaxy 500. My mom wasn't letting us put a, a <laughs> yeah. bucket of live shrimp on, on, on that velour seat in the back of that yeah. dadgum, uh, you know, uh, teal green Galaxy 500 that we had. You know, I said, we were poor. We went and bought two worm puzzlers, a couple of mirror lures. You know, and that's what we, and maybe a, and maybe a Johnson Sprite spoon. And that's all we, that's all we had, you know, type of deal. Uh, you know, I hope what people hear in this, I hope they hear, I hope they hear what it is that drives me and what it is to drives a lot of us, you included to release these fish and to, to want to promote this big fishery that we've got in its passion. Yeah. It is an absolute passion for what we do. In there. You know, and, 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 and you know what it takes, it takes some time to get that passion and there's time. And there's no doubt that you have it right. And, yeah. there, and, and I, I cannot say thank you enough <laughs> for, for sharing the passion, right. With us and with the folks that listen to the podcast and, and follow speckle truth. And, and it just shows that you coming full circle, myself going through the maturation process of, of being a catch, keep everything to, Hey, you know, the responsible stewardship, as you mentioned of a fishery, but at a younger age, and if we can continue to develop that, we have a fishery, we've safeguarded a fishery for many, 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 many years to come. And that's the legacy we want to leave. So uh, Jay, I, I know you got a charter tomorrow. <laughs> I do, it, but I do, but I sleep really good. I well, and I, and I, I don't want to keep you too long. No, no, no. Well, I want to, and I want to say something too, before we go here, for those of y'all that are listening, you obviously can't see, but, uh, Chris Bush is in the U S air force. And what I want to do is I want to thank you personally for, uh, standing on that wall because freedom's not free. Appreciate it, sir. Freedom's not free. And you know, when you're, when those of y'all are listening, when you're out there waiting, a short, your favorite shoreline, your favorite reef, or, or your favorite flats. Just understand that freedom's not free. Never has been, never will be. And uh, we appreciate you, you know, yeah. your, your service for our country. Uh, you know, and I know you drove in. I know you drove in today from San Antonio to do this, and that's ridiculous. I was like, golly, well, so, I thought you were going to be in town. He's like, no, I'm I'm leaving at four. I'm driving down there. I'm like, golly, okay, that's awesome. But that's the passion, right, for, yeah. for sharing yeah. the story. One as I alluded to at the very, very start of it, is getting to meet my mentor's mentor, a legend <laughs> in the game, literally looking at you eye to eye for an hour and 10 minutes in your own home. I, I wasn't going to miss it for the world. <laughs> well, and then not only that, then hearing the glowing remarks for David Rousey, well, that's part oh, of the yeah. reason for driving in tomorrow yeah. is actually, uh, or tonight is uh, going to go fish with, with Cap Morales yeah. and David and then uh, going to go see Mike and Tricia. Yeah. So. Well, let me tell you what, you know, uh, I, I, I love that trio. Um, you know, I've always, I've always told, I've always told Mike, I said, you know, I said, you're the specialty guy. I said, but Tricia's the better guy. <laughs> <laughs> I said, she's the better guy. I mean, I said, you know, she'll t pull you off of an area that you're not getting bit in. Let's go get some bites and we'll come back yeah. and see if we could, you know, I, and, and I have, you know, um, real, real quick, you know, David Rousey, one of the things that David Rousey, uh, taught me was the few, few times that I fished with him. He told me one time, he said, slow down. He said, slow down. He said, you've got the skills. Just let it, let it, let it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, just, just, just let it happen. One of the, one of the very first fishing tournaments that we just redfish tournaments that we mm -hmm. just blew out of the water, me and Jay Ray, the area that we fish, we call the Rousey hole. And we called it the Rousey hole because David Rousey said that about two or three weeks before the tournament, he said, he, he told me, he said, if you walk in there and catch a rat red right off of the bat, he said, you're golden. When you get those potholes, those big ones will be there. And I think we had 17 plus pounds all three God. days. It was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. So when I got up on stage, I said, <laughs> we caught him in the Rousey hole and he was standing <laughs> in the back back there. And he was like, mm -hmm. you know, and here's, here's the other thing. You know, young anglers need to know this and old anglers need to know this. There is not anything wrong with giving people credit and giving people credit for what they, who they are, what they do. You know, I have zero, you know, I, 
I, I, I consider myself lucky to even be considered in that elite group of people, you know, in that elite group of people, uh, um, you know, and there's, and there's a, there's a lot of them. I mean, you know, Hey, one of my guys in, you know, I grew up with a lot of the guys fishing tournaments with a lot of the guys in Galveston and not all of those guys. Have we always agreed with on the status of the fishery, but they're all excellent fishermen. And, uh, you know, you know, the, the Dana Bailey's, the Blaine Fryer moves, the James yeah, Bloggs, yeah. the Mickey Eastman's. I mean, you know, those guys are studs. Yeah. I mean, those guys have been around forever. One, you know, one of the, one of the quotes, um, that you had mentioned to me has resonated with me and I've, said it now a number of times to various people that you've said it is that, um, and it's, it's so resonating is that you're especially considering kind of where you're at in terms of your angling career, but you say you always walk in footprints. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know that it, it, I think one of the most irritating things to me and I, and I hear it so much and I'm, I luckily for me, I'm like five, seven and you know, not like one ninety. Because if I was like six or seven foot, I might somebody might have shot me already. But it drives me crazy to hear, and 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 I'm going to say it. It seems it seems to me that guides are a little more, a little worse about saying it than than other people. But people will say, "Well, I just you know I I, I it's just people all over my spots, you know, and there's just no such thing, mm -hmm. you know. I I mean I've never caught a fish that had my name on it." I've never pulled up to an area and it said Jay Watkins. Oh, fishy, yeah. I've got all the hotspot maps and hook and line maps. My name's not on that thing one time, yeah. you know, <laughs> and, and what's, what's unique to me, you know, when I, when, when I like, for instance, when I'm in Rockport, you know, and I'm wading airs or I'm wading turtle pin, you know, I'll think about Albie White. I'll think about Milton Pearson and, and, and Vernon Kleipas and Bill Bardwell and Robert Brooks. And I'll think about guys that, had some of them I didn't even fish with, but had influence that I'm walking in their footsteps, you know, and, uh, um, um, you know, when I'm waiting on the tide gauge bar every once in a while, I'll look back and I'll see if that, I'll see if that 13 foot whaler with that guy that, that held the state record for so long is pulling backwards, I'll be down. you know, and I wonder, wonder whose footsteps, whose footsteps I've stepped on. Or I wonder when I walk around that point, if I'm walking in Chatter Allen's, footsteps you know uh cliff webb i mean um you know unbelievable trips i've had with cliff webb um you know doug bird's got footsteps all over it type of deal uh uh ron binky uh billy sheka um I, and i'm leaving and i'm leaving people yeah. out i know i am you know but but blackwood. yeah yeah mike blackwood that's the that's the pole in the boat oh, yeah, yeah pulling the boat backwards and i had a person tell me one time that guy's pulling the boat backwards and i said yeah i said he's brilliant they said, what? I said, no hull slap. I said, quiet. I said, that whaler with that tri hole in the front, that hull slap, I said, he'll never get a shot. I said, backwards he will. Mm -hmm. I said, I bet he's throwing a wooden plug that he carved himself. <laughs> yep. You know, I had, you know, I wasn't even going to humiliate the guy by letting him know, try to let him know who it was yeah. type of deal. But, but see, that is something. And I'm going to say this, and it may make some people mad, but that's something that's gone in our society. Sure. It's gone in our society that people – respect and 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 admire those that walked before us as, as to what they left us the knowledge they left us you know the of the fishery you got to understand those guys didn't have cell phones they didn't have gps they didn't have boats that were shallow draft Heck, they didn't even have boats that had they didn't even have enough gas to get to some of the places that we go without even thinking about going at the speeds that we go they didn't have the they didn't have the type of the the, the small cast. diameter lines, the reels that would cast, the rods that were sensitive, the hooks that were sharp, they didn't have all that, you know? And so they did it. They did it in a very primitive way compared to what we, compared to what we do. And, and, and to me, it's, to me, it's, it's a, it's a sentimental thing. You know, I like the fact, I like the fact that, that I feel that way. You know, I like the fact that yeah. when I'm, you know, now, I'm, now don't get me wrong. I'm competitive. I'm competitive. I want to leave my mark. There isn't any doubt. And, and, and I think that most, I think that most competitors are that way, but the greatest competitors have great respect for their most fierce, their most fierce competitor Absolutely. competition. They Absolutely. do. 
They absolutely do. Um, you know, we're seeing it in the NFL today with Tom Brady. You know, he trains harder than he's ever trained. He eats better than he's ever eaten. Uh, and you know why he does? Because his age demands it. Well, there's some of us in this business that we're having to do the same thing. You know, I'm having to, I'm having to exercise a little bit. I'm having to pay attention to what I do because it's not as easy. It's not as easy. And I'm not 18 years old uh, type of deal. But uh, yeah, the, you know, the footstep deal, I mean, I think, I don't think there's probably, even when I began in this business almost 40 years ago, you know, there's been so many before me uh, that have done such, you know, such great things. And, and uh, you know, so far, it's ludicrous for people to think today that, well, you're in my spot. There's no, there's no yeah. such, there's no such thing. There's no such thing. What I will tell people is this. We only know a handful of the areas out there. Uh, and if you believe that those are the only areas that they're fish, you're, mi you're missing some stuff. Uh, because, um, you know, when I, McBride said this to me, he said, you've done well in Mansfield because you understand a shallow water fishery. He said, you understand it. He said, you probably didn't do as well in Baffin because it's deeper fishery. And he's right. He's right. One, I'm too short to, to wade most places where these guys fish. But uh, but in, anyway, yeah. it matches up. It matches sure. up with me. And where I, you know, where I catch fish in Rockport, those are the same areas I look for in Mansfield. You know, I mean, if I'm catching them on grass yeah. in three to four foot of water in May, in Rockport, guess what I'm looking for when I'm in Mansfield? Yes, sir. Looking for three or four foot of water with submerged grass and I'll in water temperature that matches, some food source that's, you know, available Com yep. type of deal. I use the same lures that I use here because most of that water's clear. Uh, you know. Um, and I've got, you know, I've I've got little 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 things that I think are important. You know, I like a certain type of rod, I like a certain type of knot, I like a certain weight jig head, I like to hook my Bass assassins and my mirror lures upside belly. down, I know what you're upside say down. You know, people say, you know, that's upside down. And I said, sure is. <laughs> I said, but it's straight. <laughs> yep. It's on there straight. It's on there straight, you know, S and, and that's, a, and, and guess what that prevents? That prevents line twist. Mm -hmm. And every time your line twist around your rod tip and you got to wait over to your buddy, get, guess what? That has taken fishing time yep. away from you. So you know? I want to, so we, we end most of the episodes. We're alluding to it. Um, and we do like a quick answer question uh -huh. type deal. And so, um, and then I'll ask you for just a parting shot after that. So if you had one lure to throw, what would it be? One lure to throw. It's going to have to be, uh, going to have to be plastic and okay. you know, it's going to be plastic. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to tell you why. And it, and, and it would be, it would be a bass assassin or a, a mirror lure provoker it'd be a or a tail. little, okay. uh, it'd, be a, it'd be a tail. Okay. It'd be a tail. And the reason it would be is because day in, day out, I can cover every zone, uh, that I'm fishing effectively. Uh, you know, it's a 365 day a year type of lure, you know, um, you know, the answer would be different if you were, you know, saying if you're targeting, sure. you know, what you're targeting, you gotta, I hope people understand I'm still a guide. And I'm still day in, day out. I've got some people that don't care anything about catching a big one. You know why? Because they're not there yet. They're, they're not, there. they're not, they're getting, but they're getting there. I'm going to yeah. bring them, I'm going to bring them there. You know, so it'd be, yeah, it'd be a, it'd be a soft plastic. All right. So next is, I know you throw braids. So I'm not even going to ask that question, mm -hmm. but uh, connect, uh, line of leader, not. Yeah. Uh, double uni. Double uni. Oh, double right. uni. And, oh. and I don't use fluorocarbon. Really? Yeah. Okay. And I use, I use mono and here's, here's, here's my thought. First of all, I'm not fishing around any type of structure. I'm fishing around sand and grass. I'm not fishing around rocks. I've got some, some soft mud shell that I fish in. I'm not fishing around pylons. I'm not fishing around jetties. I'm not fishing around riprap. I mean, I'm fishing shallow flats. Okay. I like the fact that well, what most people like about braid is it doesn't have any stretch. But when you add fluorocarbon to it, you still don't have any stretch. Right. So when you add mono to it, you've got 25 to 30% stretch. So when you couple that mono to that moderate action rod, I was not, fat, not fast action, moderate, moderate, moderate 
when you just, that means it's slower, slower. Yep. It's slower. That stretch and that combination of the stretch and that rod absorbs that head shake. Hook the that's why, ratio. That's why people yep. say to me on Instagram all the time, how in the world do you get that slow motion shot of that fish shaking like crazy? And he doesn't get off stretch and, yep. and moderate power. Well, I'm not going to ask the third question because it's going to be what, what kind of what, what kind of rod do you yeah. use? But um, so I want to wrap it up. Okay. I do, Jay, because I'm, I'm mindful of your time. I know you got a charter tomorrow, and I'm and I'm sorry for taking so much of it at this point. But I want to ask you uh, for your parting shot. Man, I tell you what, you know that that that's hard because I've got I've got a I've got a lot of things you know that I that come into my come into my mind. But you know, I think the parting shot is 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 this. You know, um, be respectful of, of, of what, of what we have been given, you know, uh, the freedoms that we have to, to, you know, to use the natural resources that we've got, you know, the, the institutions and the agencies we've got out there that are managing those and, and, and become a steward, become a steward of, of, of your fishery of where, of where, you know, where you're fishing. And, uh, you know, let your heart lead you and, and, and do what you do, what you think you need. You know, I mean, I, I mean, I, I've just, I'm to a point in, in my career that, you know, it's very, very important to me to let those big fish go just because I, you know, I know how rare they are. I mean, I know how rare they are. Uh, the, and, and they are, you know, I, I don't know that people, my grandpa used to say their hair, their rare as hen's teeth, you know, I mean, <laughs> I didn't know him had teeth at all, but I guess that's pretty darn rare, you know, type of deal, you know, but, um, you know, and, and another thing too, I think you, I think you, I think you need to, I think you need to, to think about what it is you're leaving, you know, and that's not just, that's not just in the fishery, but that's, uh, you know, that's with that son or that daughter that you got out there, life. you know, that's, that's, that's in, that's in, that's in life. You know, uh, I always, I always, I always told the boys, I said, uh, I, I hope people, I hope people will say when I'm gone, I hope they'll say, you know, he worked hard at it. He, 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 he worked, he was diligent. He worked, he worked hard. Um, I, I, I told a buddy of mine, uh, and you know, something else I hope, I hope, I hope that at the end of this, I hope my dad's proud of me, you know? Duh. I mean, I hope he is. I hope, I hope my boys are proud. You know, I hope they, I hope I, I hope I fight a good fight on this deal. And I hope that, 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 uh, you know, we, we influence a few people to do the right thing. And I hope that, that at the very end, you know, that my family's proud of me. Cause here's the thing. There's not a darn thing wrong with wanting people to be proud of you. Yes, sir. There's not anything wrong with somebody wanting people to be proud of you. Our, 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 our world was built on it. Our world was built on, on, you know, what people doing something that they wanted to be, they, they wanted somebody to be proud of them for, yeah. you know, type of deal. And so, uh, you know, I, I hope that, I hope that, that I leave something. I hope it's, whether it's knowledge, whether it's, you know, conservation effort, whether it's passion for the sport, whether it's, uh, you know, mentoring to your, to your, you know, to your, uh, to your kids, uh, or to somebody else's kids type of deal. I had a, I'll, I'll close with this. I had a guy tell me one day and, and it was, it was humbling. He, came up to me at the dock you know we're excited about going he said had his son there his son was about 11 and he was all decked out he had his he had everything on you know yeah. he had his forever last ray guards on yeah. and you know he had his net forever last net back there type of deal and i'm not yeah, yeah. i'm not advertising it. Yeah. that's what he had yeah. you know that's what he had and, I like, go, and, yeah. and I like billy yeah. <laughs> you know, you. but anyway um the dad said man you know just just so you know you're his hero and i said well we're gonna fix that and the guy got kind of quiet and he looked at me and i said because you're his hero and i said i'll show you today what you can do to always be his hero i'm gonna teach you to fish and i'm gonna teach you to you know and and at the same time i helped the kid understand that hey look you know fishing's not always catching it's not always catching you know and and you can't be can't be mad at me, yeah. you know, and darn sure can't be mad at your dad when you don't catch him because we're going to, we're going to give you some tools, you know, and I think he caught a couple of fish. It wasn't a, wasn't just a great day, but he caught a few fish. And honestly, that's kind of the way I like it to go. 
I don't like it to be that yeah. slam dunk that first time, you know, type of deal. So if you have a passion for it, you know, if it, if, 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 uh, let the big ones swim, you know, uh, be responsible and don't be afraid to want to leave something, something for somebody else. Thank you, Captain J for <laughs> Thank inviting you. me into your home, <laughs> uh, doing this, uh, with me I, thank you yeah That's well to say. well thank you and you tell rousey tomorrow <laughs> that you don't want to go to any of those just regular holes <laughs> say i want to go to the rousey hole roger <laughs> well thanks again okay. captain jay appreciate thank it you so much all right appreciate yes, sir. It. Take okay. care. hey everyone i just want to say thanks again for joining us here at the speckled truth podcast Regardless of fishery and where you're joining us from, we really appreciate your followership and just tuning in tonight to listen to the stories uh, that make the pursuit of trophy trout so special. And so, again, none of this happens without the support of our sponsors from Mirror Lore, Texas Custom Lures, and the original Custom Corky. Without your support, none of this is, a, is possible. So thanks again to them. We hope to see you next time here at the Speckle Truth Podcast. And we always want to leave you with this one tidbit. Always remember to take what you need and release the rest. God bless. You.